Let's solve this OPAMP exercise together. A slightly more challenging question than the one on my previous OPAMP video. We have to find the ratio VO, the output voltage, to IS, the current source. Any ideal OPAMP is governed by these two equations. VP, the voltage at the non-inverting terminal, must be equal to VN, the voltage of the inverting terminal. The second equation is IP and IN must both be zero, so no current enters either terminal of an ideal OPAMP. With this, we can solve any op-amp circuit. Notice that the positive input is connected directly to ground. This means that VP is zero, meaning that VN must also be zero by the first governing equation. Good. Let's label these on the circuit. And now let's try and understand the circuit behavior in terms of current flow. IS leaves the supply reaches this node, but then no current is going through the inverting input, so this IS flows in its entirety up through R1. And then, once it reaches that node, it splits. Part of it goes through R2, and the rest goes through R3, reaching the output terminal. Let's call this node X, and write a node voltage equation there. We have IS entering the node. The current going through R2 is VX over R2. The current going through R3 is VX minus V0 over R3. We need to find the ratio of VO to IS. So this VX is causing us a problem because we only want resistors to appear in the equation so that the ratio can only be in terms of R1, R2, and R3, the circuit parameters. So we need to find another equation that will allow us to eliminate this Vx. This second equation can be found by writing the KCL equation at this node, call it N. As we said, Is is entering it. In the current going through the inverting input is zero, as we said earlier, so this must be equal to the IS going upward through the R1 resistor. The node voltage equation for this is VN minus VX over R1. Can you see it? But remember, and we have it labeled, VN is zero, so IS is just negative VX over R1. With this second equation, Let's find the ratio VO to IS. To do this, I'm going to replace this IS by negative VX over R1, which is the second equation. And now we can relate VX to VO. Let's bring this equation over here, and now we can clear the denominators. Multiplying both sides by R1 times R2 times R3, we get this. So we don't have any denominators now. Let's expand the pair of brackets. And now we'll combine like terms. We'll bring everything involving Vx to one side and everything with Vo to the other side. Good. So now we can find Vx in terms of Vo by dividing by this big factor. So now we have Vx in terms of Vo only, and we can now bring this equation back and substitute this Vx which we found. Notice IS is negative VX over R1. So this fraction we see for VX will lose the R1 in the numerator and it'll have a negative sign as well. So IS will be negative R2 VO over the same denominator. So now we have an equation expressing IS in terms of VO and we only have the resistors. So this is exactly what we aimed for. But we want to find the ratio, so there's still a little bit of math to do. Let's cross multiply. And then we can divide both sides by negative R2 as well as IS, so that we have VO over IS on one side and all the resistors on the other side. That's it. This is the ratio. 
Now we have a negative sign in the denominator. Let's bring it to the numerator like this. Now notice two of the three terms in the numerator have an R2. So we can simplify this with the denominator a little bit. The simplification will be VO over IS is equal to the negative of R1 plus R3 plus R1 R3 over R2. So that's it. This is the ratio of VO to IS in the original OPAMP circuit. If you'd like to see more videos on OPAMPs, make sure to tell me this in the comments down below.